Hi, I'm Jen Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Today's video is a continuation of the very modern line in the English that we looked at yesterday. It's so modern it doesn't have a name yet. In this line, yesterday we looked at alpha zero playing 10 bishop b4 and today we look at stockfish's preferred move in the same line which is 10 bishop b7 and this move has also previously been played by Grishuk. The game gets very open and exciting early on and it's a struggle between the two safeties of the two different kings. So at one point we have Stockfish opening up Alpha Zero's king on the king side. At the same time, Stockfish doesn't know where to castle because the king side is open and if it castles queen side, then both of Alpha Zero's bishops will be pointing at it. So a very exciting struggle ensues. Yeah, very good, uh, very interesting game here and uh, actually theoretically very relevant as well. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at it. Okay, let's have a look at this then. So the, f the, the first few moves are familiar. 1c4, it's uh, alpha zero white this time against Stockfish's black. e5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, and now bishop c5. And again, in this game, the only move the engines were told to play was 1c4. Exactly, uh, yeah. So alpha zero has pre preferred this line with g3 and bishop g2, and Stockfish has this time preferred the line uh, e5, knight f6, and bishop c5. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, yeah, quite amazing actually how these, uh, two engines in 2018 are, uh, were, uh, you know, already exploring lines that have become very popular just recently. It's very, uh, very, very impressive actually. So e4, knight h4, d5, the super sharpest line now, d3, knight g4, hitting f2, castles, g5, hitting that offside, knight on h4, um, d4, and now this is the moment where we deviate from our previous game. So uh, um, Alpha Zero preferred bishop b4, um, whereas Stockfish, uh, I think, played bishop b4 once, um, but mainly preferred bishop e7 when it uh, reached this position. And this uh, has already been played in the game uh, Anton against uh, uh, Grishuk, and uh, Grishuk took on f2, which didn't work out very well. Um, so g takes h4 is uh, uh, a definitely a better a better idea. Just to say, um, previously when Alpha Zero had played Bishop b4, then Stockfish came up with a very interesting line of Knight f3. Exactly. Just to say that that wouldn't work so well in this particular variation um, after Bishop e7. Uh, because that pawn on g5 is better defense and also the knight on f6 would be much better defended in this line. So the sacrifice would not be as strong in this variation. Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, um, you know, moves like, uh, when you go back to f6, the, um, well, the pin on the, uh, on the knight is already broken, you know, and, uh, so, I mean, in this position, it's, uh, it's a lot safe. It's still not, uh, still not stupid, uh, amazingly enough, you know, it still, uh, gives white some compensation, but, uh, but uh, this time uh, h3 is uh, is going to be the better move. And then um, I think there was um, there was a, um, a Dutch game played. I think with h takes g3. Um, so knight c6 I think is the uh, is the novelty. Um, and I think to be honest a very sensible one. Um, so um, yeah, why open the uh, uh, the f file uh, this early? You know, let's just keep the uh, keep the tension and um, and see what white does because white's not really going to take on, on h4, you know, and uh, and possibly open up the g file a bit more and open up its king. So what um, alpha zero does, very typical, um, it plays this move f3. Just really trying to chip away at that, um, at that uh, uh, black center and get its pieces active. So e takes f3, bishop takes f3, bishop e6, and bishop f4 now. So, um, well, you can see uh, that um, uh, Alpha Zero's probably seems to be believing that um, that the Black King is going to castle on the Queen side, and um, and is preparing his bishops at the very least to point towards there. 
Uh, by the same uh, token, um, uh, Stockfish, well, it sees that uh, Alpha Zero's king is on the king's side and it's now starting to strip away those um, uh, that pawn cover in front of the king. I mean, it's a very sharp position. And here we see a really typical Alpha Zero move. Instead of directly recapturing the pawn, Alpha Zero plays a theme of moving the king up to give its rook an open file. Exactly, yeah. I mean, there was a stunning game in uh, in Game Changer, um, in a Queen's Indian, where um, where at some stage, uh, um, instead of fighting for an open file, um, Alpha Zero played King H2, Rook H1, King G1, and activated its Rook along the H file. And this is very similar. King G2, Queen D7, well, I think you know which move's going to come next then. Rook H1. H1. Um, which, I mean, actually does a... It's got a lovely open file. It's got a lovely open file. And, I mean, it also um, really um, dissuades Black from castling Kingside. You know, uh, I mean, if Black had castled Kingside on the previous move, then it would have been in huge trouble after a move like Rook H1. Very unusual. I didn't see it coming at all. You know, that was one of those uh, nice moments where you're playing through a game and you say, oh, my, my goodness, that was happening. So Stockfish castles on the uh, Queen side. And rook c1, and, um, uh, well, yeah, I mean, um, whose king is safer? A uh, tricky one to say, really. Um, White's pawn cover looks a little bit, um, uh, well, is getting stripped away, and uh, um, obviously the king's a little bit open and exposed. On the other hand, the black king doesn't have a square it can move to, and, uh, you know, there's that open c file, you know, that, uh, that looks quite dangerous. And actually, funnily enough, it's not Again, only... this is a, a typical theme from Alpha Zero. It likes to get to positions where the opponent's king really just can't move at all. Exactly, exactly. I mean, really, and yeah, we looked at this loads in uh, in, uh, in Game Change. It was one of the, the big things that really struck us about, um, about Alpha Zero's play. And it's funnily enough, it's not only the rook on the open uh, C file, because this is the, the second point of Alpha Zero's play. Um, rook H6... Just um, just look at how all those pieces are combining, you know, bishop f3, bishop f4, knight c3, rook c1, rook h6, you know, all uh, really converging towards, uh, you know, this sort of area around the black king. So, um, yeah, here Stockfish took on f3. Um, also played some engine games um, in a lot of these lines. And, uh, well, I just like this one, wanted to show you this one because it sort of shows, you know, how dangerous is it that the um, that the rooks on h6? Well, um, just in this um, uh, engine game, uh, Stockfish, this time playing white, uh, managed to land this nasty little uh, trick um, where uh, discovered attack on the pawn on c6. If you take the knight, then uh, rook takes c6 is going to be really, really strong. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it just uh, w was a nice little illustration of, uh, you know, where is that counterplay coming from? So Stockfish takes um, um, uh, um, a good, safe way of doing stuff. It takes an F3 um, and then plays F6 just to uh, to block the sixth rank. So, so the sixth rank is blocked. So let's go on to the fifth rank. Exactly. Alpha Zero finds another angle of attack. And yeah, this d5 pawn is uh, yeah is still very very weak. And of course, uh, well, it hasn't used the queen yet, so this queen can come to all sorts of places. I mean, um, b3, a4, even h1, h3, maybe. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, there's there's really lots of uh, possibilities there. So queen e8 was played by uh, Stockfish. Rook takes d5. We're starting uh, uh, getting getting at these uh, getting at the black king now because uh, obviously that the threat is now just to take on d8 and play d5. And attack that knight on c6, which is never going to be able to move. So Stockfish took took bishop d8. I mean, at least get the knight in the way of the d pawn. But knight b4 moving away, attacking the knight on c6, and d5's coming in. I mean, it looks absolutely grim for uh, for a Stockfish here. Um, but we've often mentioned it before. You know, how how does Stockfish defend? Stockfish defends uh, two ways. First of all, it tries and uh, um, and, uh, well, strip away the defences from the opponent's uh, king. And that's what it's done with uh, in, to Alpha Zero in this case. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's got that pawn on g3. It took the, uh, the pawn on g4 as well. And, of course, it uses its queen as an enormous source of annoyance. And, um, well, you could maybe think of putting one and one, one together. 
you can probably think of Stockfish's next move, which is Queen H5. Threaten Queen H2, mate. Doesn't look so bad. I mean, after all, I just take on G3. Still got all our threats. And, you know, I mean, how much have you really got aiming at, um, at the Black King? But now Stockfish plays a really, really clever move. Um, Stockfish here plays Bishop C7, and that's a multi-purpose move. So it's both attacking and defending because it's blocking the C file and also attacking down towards G3 and H2. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's a really excellent move. You know, that's uh, that really just um, uh, gives, uh, you know, Black the fighting chance he, uh, it needs. So, I mean... Alpha Zero proceeds through, carrying, uh, stripping all that away. Bishop G3. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no good discovered check that would, um, um, you know, that would really um, uh, save everything. Uh, I mean, like, you know, maybe a move like Knight B4 would be very nice, you know, to uh, get the knight completely safe and then uh, take the bishop. But the bishop can always uh, retreat back to C7 in these positions. So, uh, and then you've got huge threats. So you've got to take on uh, on G3, and now the checks begin. So actually, um, um, well, I mean, White's king is not restricted. So, you, I mean, you do know that it's always going to um, uh, to be able to run uh, relatively safely. But here, uh, the big shame happens for uh, for Alpha Zero, you could say, because um, um, Black keeps on checking, and the only way for Black for White to avoid perpetual is to step over to the C file. And when you step over to the C file, this gives Black the opportunity to um, to take the uh, the knight on C6. So Alpha Zero's initiative still continues, Queen A4, but um, Stockfish plays a very very clever defensive move. Haven't seen uh, this uh, too often, natural fact. And essentially, you know, Stockfish understands that um, if White's got the queen and the rook in play with uh, a king that exposed. Um, that's going to be the big danger. So it played queen e3 and rook g1, forcing the exchange of, uh, of rooks. Uh, the idea being that, um, well, in the queen and pawn ending that ensues, white is a pawn up, um, but there's going to be so many checks that it's just not going to be winnable. And, um, well, I'm not going to show you the rest of the game because this was 130 moves of, uh, of queen and pawn ending with a, a lot of uh, little checks put in between. But essentially, the um, um, uh, the game proceeded pretty much as I, as I said, and uh, actually the game ended up with um, uh, Alpha Zero having Queen and two pawns against uh, uh, King and Queen, but um, with a perpetual check. So, uh, um, so that was the uh, that's the, that was the exciting part of the game. The rest was uh, just the uh, the engines flexing their muscles and showing how much stamina they have. But there we are. I mean, that was the game. I hope uh, I hope that was uh, that was uh, interesting. I think it's a nice nice to see uh, you know really both sides of, uh, of this very sharp line because uh, actually I think in these games you know Alpha Zero and Stockfish have really uh, well pushed forward opening theory uh, you know quite a bit with uh, with these uh, with these lines. I think this is absolutely crucial uh, for the evaluation of this variation. And um, yeah, I mean, I, what I particularly loved was this uh, Alpha Zero theme. It's so nice, you know, in all sorts of different openings to see the same mannerisms coming up, you know, and uh, and this lovely idea of King G2 followed by Rook H1 um, and then Rook, uh, Rook to H6, you know, was uh, I thought was very, very nice. And I think also Stockfish's way of defending, you know, uh, that we've seen so often, uh, stripping the opponent's king, you know, trying to introduce random tactics basically and then using the queen as always you know to uh to, to kick off its counterplay i think uh you know very typical and uh and you know stuff we've all seen in uh in game changer you know really really good to see that so there we are um i hope you enjoyed that i mean if you haven't uh subscribed to our channel yet please subscribe yeah and um well i've mentioned game changer quite a few times you know what we think about that if you haven't looked at it, then uh, please have a have a good, have a look at that. Uh, it really is a um, it really is a great book with some wonderful uh, wonderful games and wonderful play from both engines. So, okay, thanks very much for watching, and uh, well, keep on watching because uh, we're doing loads of videos at the moment. We've got lots more planned. Thank you for watching. Thanks very much.